so that they're both they both have moments of of extremely difficult passages, but they are both accessible that you know that with the right practice you can be able to do them. So it's not as if there is something that is impossible, even though there are many difficult things to which have been a, a challenge to master in as little a time as, as, as we have had. Yes, he uh, said that, in fact, even if there are passages that are difficult, it's clear from the beginning that with a little bit of work, they can aboutir to play perfectly well in the part. It's not something insurmountable, even if there are things difficult. And that it has motivated him, of course, and that it bon, ça lui fait plaisir. So the, the difficult thing is always to be comfortable enough with what we have to play as, in as little time as we have that we can forget about our own parts but think yes. about the ensemble, exactly. which is the challenge to surmount exactly. always with, oui, with anything, any music of any sort. Ça, c'est un point très important. Um, enfin, pour nous, les instrumentistes, c'est que si la partie que nous jouons est tellement difficile que nous devons être concentrés seulement sur notre uh, uh, role, on ne peut pas vraiment s'intégrer dans l'ensemble uh, assez bien et on ne peut pas se, se jouir de, de, de la pièce et de la musique. Et que dans ces deux cas, il, il trouve qu'il peut aller uh, de, uh, derrière, uh, non, plus au-delà, au-delà uh, des difficultés techniques pour pour qu'ils puissent jouer en ensemble et bon faire de la musique de chambre. And that in both these pieces the hierarchy of attention has to be obviously on the rhythmic aspect otherwise it will fall apart whereas the whereas in many other pieces the rhythm will kind of take care of itself so that there's more energy to be able to put into one's part. So the mastery of the part is much more important in this sort of music at as early a stage as possible compared to in you like older music? Uh, I'm not sure I understood you well. So this is based on rhythm. You so that, well, the hierarchy of our attention as players has to be 90% rhythm, 10% our own thing. Mm -hmm. Whereas in the, the music that most of our classical training encourages us to work on, it's very much rhythm is one of the things that we can give maybe 20% of mm -hmm. our attention to. So that, and the, the corollary of that is that the mastery of one's own part has to be much more efficient, much quicker in this kind of music in order to have a hope of it being together on, yes. on limited, limited time, oui. that is always the case. Il dit que avec les limites de temps que nous avons euh, comme instrumentistes et euh, avec euh, la musique contemporaine, euh, il pense que euh, 90% dans la hiérarchie euh, des facteurs, des, des éléments des, de la musique, euh, 90% c'est le rythme qui compte, parce que sans le rythme dans cette pièce, tout s'écroule. Tandis que dans nos expériences de musique classique, le rythme, Mathieu dit, euh, ça peut être 20% dans la pièce. Et les autres choses euh, euh, peuvent avoir priorité. Mais pas dans, dans ce genre de musique. Well, and then of course, as we, if we have the luxury of rehearsing it for days and performing it many times, then we would be able just to go with the ears and trust, and then the amount of attention on the rhythm would decrease. So the challenge, what I find with this, with with these sorts of pieces, is that it's very rarely practical and possible um, from a practical point of view and a. Um, and the amount of, of hours that one has to get it to a stage where we can feel as comfortable as we would in playing Mendelssohn or something. Yeah. But that's the, that's the fun challenge with it. Yeah. Oui, but the more one plays such a piece, the more... Exactly. You know, I, 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 I just wanted to say what Matthew said now, that is, uh, to me, the main, the main thing. Tu peux dire en français? You tu peux dire en français? The lack of working together and rehearsal for whatever reason. But if, if you think that classical music that we've been playing all our lives and we train for years, for years to play, if we had to play next week a, a Beethoven quartet, we would be rehearsing four or five times for two hours each time. 
And uh, how can you play a work of a style that we are unfamiliar with, you know, with such, with just meeting uh, for a few minutes, really? Uh, and this is not fair to the composer. I feel that, I feel that, uh, you know, we can give a, you know, we can give a, a, a just a very rough idea of what the composer can do, but it's very, very, very different from what you really be. <laughs> But, but I, I mean, that, that's a very, obviously a very fair point in an ideal world, but I think the idea in the way of the workshop is that this is not a finished performance, yes, exactly. and that this is part of the process, so it's, it's, it's yes. a difficult point, but I, I understand that. But yes, okay. I was a refrain in general, because the play, yeah. piece that we played before, we have to play tonight in a public concert. Today is a public concert, and now is a forum, but tonight is a public concert. Yeah, but, but we don't talk about for you for this tonight. Piece. So, so, Sagi, I will translate after Sagi talks. Um, first of all, I would like to say that the piece is actually beautiful, and thank you so much. I can see a lot of what you wrote in Tarzos in your text. I must say something uh, with my colleague that uh, he mentioned something that only now came to my mind immediately. In today's world, we are all definitely in London, I assume also in such a city like Paris, uh, musicians are very busy. And life are uh, moving quite fast and we find ourselves in a pressure to study things and to need to prepare them uh, faster than probably when they created uh, music in the past, they had a bit more time, let's say, or to be familiarized with the composer or to meet with him. I, I think the pieces that change in every bar, the tempos, uh, are maybe, uh, and they are very challenging from point of view of rhythm force, and some uh, technical, are less practical these days, than pieces which are bringing the melodies out, what the composer has, and I don't think it's, a, it's something bad if composers these days will try to bring the same ideas that they have, but in a much more simpler way, that the audiences can also communicate. I mean, we all know that at the time of Beethoven and Mozart, if you he played the sonata and he changed harmony, everyone will know immediately. Today, audiences are not that educated like those days. And to create an extra challenge for today audiences, on top of that, I think it's maybe it's not right. Your, melodies and your techniques are so brilliant in a way to create ideas but because of so many different um, bars uh, uh, counting and, and rhythms and changing of tempo in, in the middle we find ourselves quite in a big challenge to follow the pianist uh, unlike your other two movements, I'm talking now just about the color and color the other two moments, we find them much more freely and uh, feeling. And I'm sure as a composer, you felt that also with our performance. So from that point of view, that, that's my feeling. It's not a, something against the composers of today. I just think it's more practical because this is how life it is uh, these days. And musicians don't have that privilege of time. I, I, I understand, of course, what Sally says, but on the other hand, I insist on what I said before. If we really practice the necessary hours of ours, we wouldn't have any problem with bar changes in three and four and five. We could do anything. But you have to really know the music very well. You, can, you, cannot, you cannot play a piece of music and count in one, two, three, four. Yes. You have to really but know. I so I, I, think it's, I think it's the composer knows what to write. I know a composer in South America who doesn't write any bars at all. Any from the beginning to end, there are no bow lines. <laughs> uh, all, 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 all you have is just uh, crotches and quavers and uh, semi quavers, so you know the length of each note. But there are no bow lines whatsoever, so there is no crotch. <laughs> and uh, but I think I think that you know it's a question of really uh, working. Uh, donc il faut comprendre les instrumentistes aussi. Alors je vous donne la parole. Je, je crois avoir passé bien plus que 4 heures sur quelques mesures d'une suite de barres pour violoncelle. 
Ah non, mais ça c'est juste pour pouvoir faire les notes, I mean, pour pouvoir les lire. Right. Et, les et, faire et de... si on veut jouer God Save the Queen de Paganini au violon, ça va être encore plus long. Et pourtant, c'est écrit, et pourtant on le joue. Euh, non, alors, mais. Alors, alors, bien sûr, je, je ne veux pas. Pour veux... apprendre les notes et, et, et les harmonies. Et... Oui, à, bah, à la je, fin je, des 4 heures, je, je, je ne les avais pas. Je, je ne veux pas dire. Alors, on, on revient à une chose qu'on avait dit auparavant. Il, il y a une ligne qui est parfois très, très fine pour les compositeurs, qui est entre ce qui est effectivement techniquement impossible et quelles sont les contraintes imposées par les instruments que nous devons effectivement prendre en compte et respecter. On, on ne peut pas dépasser certaines contraintes physiques. Il, il, il existe des choses qui sont impossibles à jouer, effectivement, oui. Mais, d'un autre côté, c'est aussi notre rôle de compositeur de proposer de nouvelles choses à jouer et de proposer des solutions, des, des possibilités qui sont exigeantes pour les instrumentistes, effectivement. Parfois, on demande des choses qui ne sont pas exigeantes du tout, c'est très bien. Je crois que ce, ce dernier mouvement que nous avons écouté, techniquement, n'est pas du tout exigeant. Non. C'est très bien. Euh, D'autres mouvements ou... seront techniquement exigeants. Là, n'est pas la question. Que ce soit techniquement exigeant ou pas, ce n'est pas une question musicalement intéressante. Hein? Ce qui est musicalement intéressant, c'est qu'est-ce qu'on arrive à faire avec bien ça sûr. Combien de temps ça peut nous prendre euh, Et, et j'aimerais, euh, par rapport à ce que les instrumentistes ont dit, je pourrais le redire en anglais après, être entièrement d'accord avec euh, notre collègue le pianiste, et je suis en, vraiment pas d'accord avec euh, la, la, la position de mon collègue violoncelliste, parce que, uh, and if I may say this, I'm, I'm disagreeing strongly with what you said. Um, I, I don't think that aiming at uh, a, an easier solution, just because we have some constraints in how the world is, 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 is necessarily a very good idea. I mean, we have to deal with, with constraints all the time, but it's our role as musicians, and I mean composers and interpreters alike, to change this situation. I mean, if, if we don't, no one else will because there is no one else the only pe the only people doing music are composers and interpreters and then there's people listening to music and people listening to music don't care if we spend four hours rehearsing something or 20 minutes uh, they they care that there is something that is understandable on stage uh, that 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 can that they can relate to not necessarily that they can find beautiful but that they can that they can relate to something that can have an emotional impact on them if, if you will or that can at least, as, as our friend Kroza said, pick their curiosity. Uh, and this doesn't always go through uh, avoiding measure changes, and especially those that are here. I mean, uh, 1912, Stravinsky wrote far worse than this in Le Sacre du Printemps. And I mean, th this is six, eight, nine, eight, four, eight. Uh, I'm not saying that it, it, this doesn't make some, some technical. Stravinsky's music always has the conductor. Well, yes. but. Some other pieces with, with lots of, of, of measure changes, and, and this you, you all have the the the, 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 the favor to follow. I mean, uh, it's not. I, I'm not saying it's absolutely easy to do this, and and, and you could do it with, with with one foot strapped to your back. But it's it's it seems reasonable uh, as as a sort of effort. I, I'm not sure what sort of metrical modulations we were talking about uh, before, but ev even those. I mean. Uh, Trying to avoid, uh, what I mean, what I want to say, if I make it short, is just trying to avoid difficulties because we are presently in a sort of setup in which we frequently lack the time to deal appropriately with these difficulties doesn't seem to me to be a very musically healthy solution. That's it. Thank you. You have been in Angleterre, n'est-ce pas? Vous tous habitez en Angleterre. Et il, y a, il y a en Angleterre un, un compositeur euh, euh, d'une grande réputation et très connu actuellement qui s'appelle Brian Fermira. Et je pense qu'il a droit à la vie. Il a droit à la vie. Il, a, il, est, il, il est comme Guillermo Carvalho il vient, vient de dire. Et nous, les compositeurs, non seulement euh, écrivons la musique pour, pour être euh, jouée facilement, joué facilement. Ah. on essaie de développer les idées et de, 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 de faire avancer la pensée, oui. non seulement la pensée musicale, mais la pensée en général. Et je pense que les compositeurs qui, qui proposent des de, de pièces qui sont vraiment d'une profondeur 
musicale absolument époustouflante, il faut le respecter. Il faut le respecter, ce n'est pas une question de, de le jouer en 10 minutes et dire voilà, euh, Doramifa, euh, croche, noir. Oui, non, oui, non, 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 c'est une question de profondeur et de respect. Et, et je pense que ça, il faut, il faut, le, il faut le faire. Sinon, euh, on, va, on va finir par euh, tous manger euh, à Burger King. Yes. Et ce n'est euh, pas non, ça. Et, et, oh yes. euh, le professeur José euh, Manuel Lopez dit que euh, là, quand il y a un bon compositeur avec une profondeur, quand nous avons des composers, you know, celebrated, very good composers who have a lot of depth in their, in their thinking because one of their uh, aims is to actually make the thinking progress. Um, so they don't particularly compose just in order to make things easy for people to play them, but in order to advance the musical education and the musical ideas, they, they are creators. Of, of different, wait a second. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I would like just to say very short to what you said. If it was a case of a longer movement, I will agree with you 100% and with the lady there. As it is a miniature, which in a miniature, as a majority of composers try to squash as much as possible to, to bring a, an idea out, I think that, uh, in one, and that's why I mentioned, I gave the compliment, and I'm sorry maybe if you didn't understand what I said, because I said the, the piece has beautiful atmosphere and mm -hmm. lots of things. No, 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 no. I did mention so specific in one movement yes, that yes, I played, yes. which I felt that there it was maybe better to or to go with one or with the other, but the fact that the combination is not because it's impossible. Everything is possible in life. But wh what my feeling is, it is better to bring some melodies out and there is no shame in it whatsoever. And uh, uh, we have today another piece which the composer gave melodies for the, the instrument to each one of them and was not ashamed to give it out. In here, my feeling specific is I'm playing something and I have no chance of express anything. I'm giving a lot of effects. And those effects with different uh, timings, in my opinion, are less effective than if I will have something in certain time and just effects, or just melody out and without the other thing. I know it's a bit complicated and it doesn't sound so straightforward, but the other two movements, that's why I felt they work fantastically well, and that's my only opinion. It's nothing to do with the fact that a, a composer should not try or should not uh, write something complicated. It can be as complicated as possible. If a musician takes the, the piece and going to perform on it, then the composer succeeds, because if it's not, then the composer is not existed. Maybe he lives, but if no one performs his piece, I just want to say that uh, people like Brian Ferniho, and this is the kind of music I was familiar with and started off with, um, the, the performers are very devoted and they are often specialists. And the thing about this situation is we're not talking about specialist musicians. And there are certain things which you actually know about the idiom of music like Brian Ferniho's music. I mean, for example, if you look at Brian Fernhoe's music and you look at the complexity, you might just die. You'll fall off your stool. But actually, there are fundamental differences which you know when you get to know the idiom. For example, in Brian Fernhoe, he writes very long bars. And usually his tempi are very slow. So the rate of change is actually more or less comparable to another music. But if you look at it and the complexity of the notation and so on, you might just think this is impossible. In fact, it is possible given the, uh, the discipline, um, the devotion, 